Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, I'm going to cover a quick and easy way to paint the NATO camouflage scheme. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. The three-tone NATO camouflage scheme is a pretty common camouflage pattern. In fact, I think it's still being used to this day. If you like Cold War era wargaming or model painting, you're going to be familiar with this scheme. It's, of course, extremely common because pretty well every armored vehicle in all of NATO had this scheme applied to it at one point in time or another. Since this scheme is so common, there is a lot of reasons why a gamer should be able to paint it and also paint it quickly. If you're like me and you want hordes of models for games like Team Yankee, you're really going to need to get used to applying this scheme. Over the years, I've come up with a pretty surefire method for this, and I've used it to great effect on more than one 15mm wargaming army. I figured in this episode, I would bring you up to date on how I do my method. It might just help you complete your own armored vehicles for your own games. Let's get to it. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Without their assistance, miniature landscape hobbies would not be possible. If you would like to learn more about the benefits of becoming a Patreon supporter, please check the link in the video description. Before we get too far into the techniques themselves, I want to talk a little about colors. The NATO three-tone scheme is so well known that you can buy NATO green, black, and brown and get down to painting. However, my philosophy about miniature coloration is a little different. Namely, if you go with the real tones, you'll get a very dark, flat-looking final product. Since we're talking wargaming, and probably are referring to 15mm scale, or even smaller, we have to push the colors up to a much lighter tone to imply the model is collecting the same amount of light as the real thing. So, be prepared to substitute other colors, or mix increasingly lighter shades of the genuine ones. The other consideration is of course shading. Since a 70 ton tank casts a lot more shadow than a 1-100 scale one, the recesses and shading need to be exaggerated as well. Remember, contrast is what makes the model look better to the viewer, and the smaller the model, the more we have to push the contrast up. With that theory handled, there is another aspect of the scheme I want you to keep in mind. I paint with an airbrush for speed and simplicity. If you don't have access to an airbrush and want to follow my scheme, just stick to a similar color of paint and apply it with a layering method. The first painting step is the primer. I'll make this simple. I prime the model with matte black. Why? Well, black helps preserve the deeper shades in the recesses of the model. I used a rattle can black spray paint that's plastic safe. Once the primer is good and dry, I then move on to the NATO green. This was applied to pretty much the whole model except the tracks. I try to keep the application thin to allow the black undercoat to take the brightness down a notch in areas that would be in direct sunlight, such as the roof, I sprayed a little heavier to make the green more opaque. Something to keep in mind at this step is that since this is a wargaming piece, I treated it as though the light was coming from straight above. Of course, if you're using a model for a diorama with different lighting effects, you might want to change this. I follow up adding about 50-50 duck egg green to the NATO green and apply it, accentuating the areas that should be in the most direct light, and I also build it up near the hard edges. Finally, the very most extreme edges and the upper surfaces got a gentle spray of pure duck egg green. This paint may have a funny name, but it's a very pleasant minty green color. Now comes the time to tackle the camo. 
Here I originally had a bit of an issue. If you look at the NATO three-tone pattern, you can see that the colors are sprayed on, though the edges are quite defined. Initially, I tried to reproduce this with an airbrush, but the patterning just was not distinct enough. As a result, I switched back to painting the camo patterns by hand. Black is applied first, and since I don't have NATO black on hand, I use German Grey. It's maybe a little lighter than the real NATO black, but as we discussed already, increasing the brightness on a miniature is usually a good idea. Since this is to be brushed on, I add quite a lot of acrylic thinner. Then I proceed to block in the black patterns. With the heavy thinning, the paint flows well. I did this to keep the finish smooth, but it does require a second coat in some spots. A lot of NATO patterns are factory applied and follow a template, so I paint the patches identically on each vehicle of the same type. When the German Grey has dried, I move on to Mud Brown. This brown is again lighter than NATO Brown, but it looks great. I thin it as well and apply it exactly the same way as I did for the German Grey. Now the majority of the work is in hand, but as always at this point the miniature is looking kind of flat. The solution of course is to add a highlight. After a ton of experimenting over the years, I feel the best option here is German Yellow, which is a light, light yellow. When applied by a dry brush, German Yellow looks natural on the green, brown, and black, and where it gathers in a chalky manner, it looks like regular wear and tear or paint chips. After I've put this on, I now have the major colors pretty much done. But things look a little discordant because the colors are not tied together with a common tone. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. To deal with this, I usually use one of two options. My favorite is to use MIG ammo shaders the military green color in particular. This goes on by airbrush and I layer it over the whole model. It adds a dark green tint and gathers a little more in the crevices providing a very natural shade. If you don't use an airbrush or have a similar shading product to the MIG option, you're not out of luck. Just mix a glaze. This is done by thinning your midtone so in this case the 50-50 duck egg green to NATO mix until it's virtually clear. You can use water, acrylic thinner, or a combo of the two to do this. At this point I also recommend that you either add a drop of airbrush flow improver or dish soap to break the surface tension. Then you can brush this over the whole model. When the glaze dries, it'll subtly tint the surface, making the colors more uniform, and it'll help conceal any chalky dry brush residue. Now the camouflage is done. The rest of the model, including the detail painting and weathering, is up to you. I won't get into specifics on these steps, as many of these are quite detailed, and they're covered in some of my other videos. One thing I always suggest, though, is that you line in, which I almost always leave until the very end of the job. Lining in is the process of deepening the shadows and the panel lines to add extra contrast, which makes the surface details really pop for the viewer. You can do this by taking a fine brush and thinned black paint and outlining all of the major features on the model. Or, you can invest in some varnish and enamels and do a pin wash. I always recommend the pin wash though. It looks better and it's very fast to do. To achieve a pin wash, first spray your model with a gloss or satin varnish and leave it to dry for several hours. Then get out mineral spirits thinner and a bottle of black panel lining enamel. Gently moisten a brush with the thinner and brush it over the surface of the model. Then get out the enamel and run it into the crevices on the model. The thinner will accumulate where you want the enamel to flow and this will help the dark pigments go straight to the spots where you want them. 
Lastly, after the enamel has dried, I always suggest you apply a couple layers of matte varnish. Since we're wargamers, our models will be handled frequently, so you want to varnish them to protect against wear and tear. Again, I use an airbrush for this, but you could use a rattle can or brush on option for your varnishes if you want. So there you have it, my guide to fast and easy NATO camouflage for wargaming models. I know there is a ton of other ways you could handle this, but I've found after several years of refinement that this method is pretty hard to beat. That being said, if you have any ideas for applying your camouflage schemes, make sure you mention them in the comments so we can all help one another improve our painting skills. If you'd like to learn more about acrylic layer painting, please watch this video. Or if you'd like to learn more about painting Cold War Soviet vehicles, please watch this other video instead. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.